Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The deputy of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited today His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa at Rifa'a Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Deputy King and His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the Bahraini society's unity under the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Royal Highnesses stated that the upcoming elections will be another achievement to be added to the kingdom's records in the democratic field, wishing the candidates success in the parliamentary elections. They directed government agencies and officials to provide all facilities for the voters. They also affirmed that the upcoming elections will strengthen the foundations of the kingdom's present and future, according to the Comprehensive Development March. The, their Royal Highnesses affirmed the continuation of the development march in the kingdom adding that there is a firm government determination based on a royal desire to achieve the best for its people. Their Royal Highnesses reviewed regional and international developments and expressed pride in the growing relations between Bahrain and various countries and its reputation in light of its policies, which are based on strengthening relations with all countries and its keenness to develop their relations and strengthen their cooperation with brotherly and friendly countries. Under the patronage of the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee and Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian Federation, His Highness, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the endurance race season will kickstart tomorrow with the participation of a number of riders and horse stables. His Highness affirmed that this race will be exceptional and will witness strong competition among the best riders and stables. He added that the participants started their preparations for the race tomorrow. He also said that the race will witness a wide participation, especially due to the positive participation in the previous, which will contribute in the success of the current season. His Highness requested the committees of the Royal Federation to follow up on the preparations of the rest of the committees in order to achieve success in the race. His Highness urged the riders to achieve the best results and said that the race is a great opportunity for them to do their best and show their continuous improvement. He praised the level of development of the Bahraini endurance sport and wished all participants success. His Highness directed the Royal Equestrian Federation to provide the support needed to the riders to enhance the honor image of the sport and praised the organizing procedures that were responsible for the veterinary check-ups for the horses participating in the race. President of the Royal Equestrian Federation, Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, praised the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser towards Bahraini sports. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailed the large participation of Bahraini youth to run for parliamentary and municipal elections, noting their programs and the issues that concern society and the future of the homeland. His Highness stated that this reflects the vitality the Bahraini youth enjoy, as well as their patriotism and their desire to work through the legislative authority in the efforts of the kingdom's development. He added that the youth are keen to interact with national causes as the time is appropriate to see the competent youth in parliament contributing to legislation and supervision and serve the nation as representatives of the people. His Highness also added that this year's election witnesses 50,000 youth being eligible to vote, which reflects their sense of national responsibility. The 
the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today member of the Central Committee, President of Palestine Olympic Committee and head of the Palestine Football Association, Major General Jibril al Rajoub. Palestine's ambassador to Bahrain and a number of senior officials were also present. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Nasser reviewed with Major General Al Rajoub means of boosting joint cooperation between Bahrain and Palestine in the youth and sports sectors, in addition to the exchange of visits between youth delegations from both countries. The two sides also discussed promoting agreements signed between Bahrain and Palestine to be in line with the development of the Bahraini Palestinian experience in the field of youth and sports. His Highness Sheikh Nasser asserted the importance of the Palestinian officials' visit to the kingdom in laying strong foundations of cooperation between the two countries through exchange of expertise, noting Bahrain's keenness in opening further communication channels with Palestine in the different youth and sports fields. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the solid relations linking the two countries in all fields, expressing hope for developing broad horizons of constructive cooperation to meet the aspirations of youth in both countries. For his part, Major General Al Rajoub praised the outstanding efforts exerted by Bahrain in supporting the youth and sports movement and the distinguished results achieved by the Bahraini athletes in general, continental and international championships. He also noted the importance of organizing organizing a number of joint programs in the youth and sports fields. He further hailed the strategy adopted by His Highness Sheikh Nasser in supporting Bahraini football that led to putting it on the right track and its presence in various continental and international tournaments. Deputy Premier and President of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, patronized the ceremony held by the Education and Training Quality Authority, marking its 10th anniversary. Deputy Premier and First BQA's Board of Directors Chairman, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and ministers attended the event. In a statement, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak said that the established represented a quantum leap in education in Bahrain. Bahrain, noting that it is among the initiatives launched by the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training for the aim of developing education and strengthening the kingdom's educational status at the regional and global levels. The Deputy Prime Minister also stated that due to the directives of His Majesty Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the direct follow-up of the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, efforts will continue to develop education and training in the Kingdom. The Deputy Premier asserted that Bahrain's educational renaissance, which began in 1919 with the construction of Al Hidayah and Al Khalifiya as the first official school in Bahrain, adding that Bahrain celebrates its centennial of official education in Bahrain next year. As part, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication and Deputy Chairman of the Education and Training of Quality Authority, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmad Mohammed, affirmed that the launching of the authority comes under the goal of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the support of Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak to ensure the success of this initiative through a comprehensive program to develop education and training. The ceremony included a presentation by the international expert Peter Chang, who praised the Kingdom's experience in the field of developing education 
education and quality assurance under the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The CEO of the authority, Dr. Jawahar Al Mathaki, delivered a presentation regarding the march of the education and training development in the kingdom since its establishment, where she highlighted the idea of the national initiative and the aims of developing a high quality education and training. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak launched the authority's book titled A Decade of Developments, which highlights the march of the authority. He also launched the new website and distributed commemorative gifts to the international speaker and members of the authority. Education Minister Dr. Majid bin Ali Al Nuaimi delivered a working paper at the 9th Education Conference in Abu Dhabi, UAE, themed Advanced Education for a Changing World, UAE's Educational Strategy, held by UAE Center for Strategic and Research Studies in the presence of Emirati Education Minister Hussein bin Ibrahim Al Hamadi and the Center's General Director Dr. Jamal Sanad Al Suwedi, academic researchers and officials. Dr. Al Nuaimi highlighted various themes, including the challenges facing education and how to overcome these challenges. He outlined Bahrain's educational progress, including developmental projects implemented by the minister. He asserted the importance of maintaining the national identity via V modern technology, pointing out that the experience of citizenship and human rights enhancement schools contributed in lowering the rate of incidence of student violations, improved overall performance of participating schools, especially in terms of personality development of students. The Minister of Islamic Affairs, Justice and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, announced that the number of Bahraini citizens voting from outside of the country has doubled compared to the previous year. The Executive Committee of the 2018 elections affirmed that the voting, which was held yesterday, began from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and pointed out that in this case of re-elections, the voting will be held on Tuesday the 27th. With election day only two days away, citizens are gearing up to cast their ballots and participate in the democratic process passionately upheld by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. For the first time in our modern democratic uh, process here in Bahrain, uh, we have, through the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, uh, arranged for a national polling uh, to foresee the views of the uh, constituents of Bahrain uh, for the upcoming elections. We are proud uh, of our democratic process, but we would want as much as possible to include and involve the constituents of Bahrain and to seek their views and their uh, aspirations and uh, uh, intentions to the upcoming elections. It's a democratic process. We need everybody to participate, young and old, and uh, to choose the candidate that they 
want it is important to choose the right parliament uh, inshallah for our democratic process the elections um, are, are a very important event for bahrain of course once every four years you get the opportunity to vote in britain it's only once every five years so you should consider yourselves lucky this is how you build not only democracy but confidence confidence in the system because everybody is guaranteed the right to express himself and this right actually entails that you listen to the people and means that you're interested in helping them out to achieve what they are looking for. So it's actually a process that opens up, that indicates that Bahrain is wide open to listening to its own people, wide open to including everybody in. Taking part, expressing the vote, the, the voice of the people, it's very important to forge uh, you know, a common uh, identity and to also to have a, a say and, uh, and the politics which are in the policies which are implemented in the country so i think that in each and every country democratic country where it is possible to vote it is important to vote Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi affirmed the ministry's readiness to cover the 2018 elections to highlight citizens' keenness to practice their constitutional and political rights in line with the royal reforms. The Information Minister stressed commitment to provide a full media coverage for the upcoming elections, saying 510 of the ministry's employees will take part in providing comprehensive coverage of the elections through radio, television, Bahrain news agency, and social media. In addition to providing Arab and foreign media with data, reports, and newsletters on the elections. He added 10 outside broadcasting vehicles equipped with advanced technology are in place to provide live news coverage from polling places. The minister said since Royal Order 36 in 2018 was issued, the ministry has begun preparing and broadcasting reports, meetings, radio and TV awareness programs of the development stages of the electoral process in cooperation with experts experts from legislation, legal opinion authority, and other government institutions. In addition to intensifying efforts to cover the two polling days. Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees and Executive Director of the Isa Cultural Center, Dr. Shay Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, attended today the celebration marking the International Children's Day, which was dedicated to children of autism at the Children's Library. The event, which was organized with the participation of the Alia Center for Early Intervention and the IMAC Institute for Music, included a recreational program aimed at serving students' needs and developing their motor and intellectual skills. Drawing, color, and music competitions were also organized by the IMAC Institute, encouraging students to perform movements and interact with the group members. The event also aimed at encouraging students with special needs in general and students of autism in particular to engage in the community and provide a modern educational environment in line with the continuous development of education in this field. The Minister of Works, Municipalities of Essen, Urban Planning, Aslam bin Abdullah Khalaf, revealed that the Ministry is preparing for the opening of the lower bridge of the Alba Junction that joins the Istiqlal Highway and King Hamad Highway that shall coincide with the National Day celebrations to be held in December. Khalaf affirmed that the project is regarded as one of the major projects for road network and development and shall have a positive outcome on the national economy given that it's located in a dense industrial, commercial and housing projects. He also stated that the ministry is planning to expand the King Hamad Highway and Al Istiqlal Highway as part of the project adding that 80% of the road work has been completed and 98% of the flyovers. The minister also announced the first stage of the expansion of Sheikh Isa bin Salman Road will be completed soon with the addition of a fourth route to Manama and Maharraq. He also announced that the ministry began implementing the expansion of Sheikh Zayed Road before the end of this year, as well as the expansion of the Salmabad Road with the removal of uh, roundabouts and exchanging them with traffic lights. 
Chairman of the Board of Trustees of King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Shaykh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received the Patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church, His Holiness more and more Ignatius Ephraim II, during a visit of this is Bahrain delegation to Bayt Al Quran in the presence of the founder of Bayt Al Quran, Abdul Latif Kano, and members of the Board of Trustees of the Center. Dr. Shaykh Khalid bin Khalifa affirmed that the values of peaceful coexistence in the kingdom are embodied through the policies and initiatives of the rulers of the country of more than 200 years. He praised the efforts of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to maintain peaceful coexistence and religious tolerance on the international level, which enhance the status of the country and make it a leading country in supporting stability among nations. The Patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church expressed pleasure in visiting Bayt al-Quran and praised the efforts of the founder. He hailed the efforts of the kingdom and its people in maintaining religious tolerance and cultures, which is evident through the provision of kingdom of various churches and temples for various religions. He also praised the wise vision of His Majesty the King and warm welcome he received while visiting His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailing respect and acceptance of the people of Bahrain. He wished Bahrain peace and prosperity. The Archbishop of Jazeera Euphrates, His Grace Mor Maurice Amsih, praised the warm welcome and values of coexistence of the people of Bahrain. He expressed pleasure in visiting Bayt Al Quran. I would like to say that Bahrain is not stranger to us because we used to have churches in Bahrain in the early centuries of Christianity uh, up to the maybe 7th, 8th, even 9th century. Not only history, presence also, present time, we feel uh, th that the Bahraini people are, are very open-minded, very tolerant and uh, they are spreading this spirit of tolerance and of acceptance of the other which is very important for the future of humanity. We cannot live uh, uh, as human beings in, uh, on this earth if we are not cooperating, working together and accepting each other. This, um, we are happy to be here today at this House of Quran uh, to be able to see all these uh, copies and uh, manuscripts of, uh, of the Quran, uh, an indication of, uh, of the richness of this country. We take a blessed picture uh, when we visit Beit al-Quran here. Uh, you know, when we come to religious place, it's not to see the holy book. We beloved it in this book, we respect this book, and also we know this book, he have like spiritual line between us and between God, like a great, great light to open for us through the Quran, through the Holy Bible, through the good things, from God through the people. The London School of Economics and Political Science hosted a delegation from the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain to represent Bahrain's distinguished experience and pioneering initiatives in the field of tolerance, coexistence, as well as religious and sectarian diversity. Bahrain's ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, academians, researchers, students, and representatives of religions in the UK attended the event which held in conjunction with the World Day of Tolerance. King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence Board of Trustees Chairman Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Second Deputy Chairperson and Chairperson of This is Bahrain Society, Betsy Matthewson, in addition to Professor of the King Hamad Chair in Interface Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence, Alessandro Sagioro, took part in the forum. Dr. Sheikh Khalid highlighted in his statement Bahrain's deep rooted experience in tolerance and coexistence among various religions, sects, and ethnicities hosted by Bahrain in love and peace throughout its long history without distinction based on religious or sectarian considerations. The attendees loaded Bahrain's distinguished experience in the field of peaceful coexistence, praising the enlightened royal vision reflected by Bahrain's declaration of peace and fraternity among all components of the Bahraini society. They affirmed that Bahrain is a role model to be emulated in the region and the world regarding coexistence, acceptance of the other and respect for religions and sects.
pleased today to be able to talk about um, the work of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with many uh, different people, different faith communities and other academics and scholars. And it was very interesting that once again the focus of all of the engagement with the audience was about the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration. His Majesty's words really resonate uh, with people of all faiths, all communities, all ethnicities and cultures. And of course it should not be underestimated that his Majesty's words are the perfect foil to combat extremism and terrorism and the radicalization of our young people. Pleasure to be here in the heart of democracy, in one of the hearts of Europe, uh, to speak about the King Hamad chair. Uh, we are starting this program now in Rome, Sapienza, and it is important uh, to discuss it with uh, other universities uh, inside Europe. Uh, we want to proceed in this uh, uh, work throughout the knowledge about religions uh, in the name of the King Ahmad chair and in the name of uh, His Majesty King Ahmad. We were invited by um, His Majesty uh, to come to Bahrain under the auspices of the King Hamad Center to develop leadership programs for young people and I gave some reflections on just how much we love Bahrain. Uh, the informal nature of discourse, the fact that people love their country and the hospitality was immense and the diversity of your culture is something I think we in Britain could actually learn from, particularly in regards to religion, that religion is a normal part of your life. I think it's so wonderful to have this declaration and this leadership, especially when we see what's going on in the region and Iran's destabilizing behavior, in addition to their consistent and ongoing persecution of the Baha'i community. Today's event was remarkable. Um, it's a lovely event. It was obviously very informative. And uh, this is not the first time that I've seen the declaration because I had the opportunity to come to the event at St. George's House in Windsor in May of 2018. Um, but when I read the declaration then and when I read it again tonight, I'm overwhelmed with a sense that uh, these are words that are desperately needed in our time. I'm so happy to be here today in the Bahrain society to give us that love and information that we are valued. It doesn't matter which religious we are. And to be part of you, it's such a pleasure. I'm very, very happy to be part of Bahrain. On the sidelines of the first GCC Health Insurance Conference and Exhibition, the WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros Adhanom, commended the Bahraini health experience and the government's commitment towards achieving the global set universal health coverage goals. He shed light on the exemplary primary care system in the country. Dr. Adhanom also highlighted the inclusive coverage to all citizens and residents alike. This, along with the new planned reforms through the National Health Plan 2016-2025, and the National Social Health Insurance Program, Sahadi. The Bahraini experience, one, one uh, element is it started actually a long time ago. Uh, it didn't wait until its economy has been strengthened like, like now. That's one. I mean, uh, the UHC. And this shows that the political commitment to universal health coverage started actually uh, some time ago now. And within that uh, universal health coverage, the other uh, important um, element is primary health care. And Bahrain actually started primary health care be before the al Mata declaration. It's one of the countries that has started before then. A full interview with the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom, will be aired right after the news bulletin. Yesterday marked the graduation of the first batch of Forsati for Her Female Coding Academy. The University of Bahrain has launched the project in partnership with UNDP, Microsoft, ThinkSmart and Tamkeen to develop a high number of female programmers. The project aims at creating 3,000 highly skilled female programmers from all subject areas with a target of 30 successful candidates going on to set up their own technology-led business and also support great Bahraini initiatives such as 
U.S. fintech bay. The digital economy requires talent and infrastructure, and such initiatives will enhance productivity and Bahraini youth employability, enabling them to lead the future of the IT industry. Backed by the new Microsoft certifications, the first graduating batch includes 16 empowered female students, capable of providing the backbone for Bahrain's emerging digital economy and growing entrepreneurship ecosystem. Diversity for her is an innovative program. It is to build the female human capital of Bahrain to develop uh, their skills in programming and IT. It helps them to, it's not even, um, it's not even just technical skills, it also builds up the soft skills. For instance, if a student is doing her classes in the morning and she does it in the evening, she can arrange her time. So it's part of time management as well. So overall it shows that the student is capable to build up her skills and you know, enter the job market. The idea was what can we offer to young, capable women in order to be able to enter the labor market. Uh, so we saw that coding uh, and different elements of, of the digital world is very much needed and this program uh, was designed specially for them with uh, international certification. The numbers tell us that there are not enough Bahraini women who are programmers, who are coders, who are developers. There is a shortage and our aim is to make this number higher. Why we want to make the number higher? Because there are job opportunities, there is business opportunities, and we want Bahraini women to be successful, having a brighter future. We gained the skill needed for the market, and I feel like I'm more confident. I can confidentially say that I'm an IT graduate with the professional certificate. If I haven't taken this course, I, I will not be able to be in my position right now because I'm using what I have learned. I, I didn't know anything before I joined the program. They, it teached me everything from scratch, actually.